man, I've never heard audibly from God. So this is you, Zach. This is you. Really? Let's let's tackle yeah. these one at a time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so no, let's Which one of us okay. has never heard audibly from God? And I, I didn't write heard that audibly question. From God. Oh, okay. Let's... I haven't heard audibly from God. I thought I did, but I was young, so probably I was wrong. So I haven't. And Jeff? You did. Yep. All right. Yeah. Now go. So so this I love this question. I, I'm I'm in the middle of teaching prayer class right now. We're on week, we just did week three, and and this comes up a lot. And I think there is a, a lot of kind of a misnomer and this thought when you hear pastors and leaders or people talk about, well, and then God told me this, and there's kind of this yeah. presumption that a Val Kilmer voice like Prince of Egypt or something is going to come and say say something. But that's not how it is. But the reality is... You didn't go with Morgan Freeman? That's Morgan always Freeman? the God voice no. that people reference, okay. Gina. Jeez. Val Kilmer, Val deep Kilmer. cut. Come on. Prince of Egypt? The saint. The best. As long as it's hot Val Kilmer, we're okay with it. <laughs> oh, Iceman. No. Val Ice Kilmer. Man. So my good friend Val Kilmer. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that was Tiny Val Kilmer. <laughs> he once was in a movie about Egypt. We're going to be praying by Say Once I think I turned into Cosby there for <laughs> a minute. What are you? Val Kilmer <laughs> puts the pill in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> he goes to sleep in the little jello. Oh my God. But he pops. <laughs> goes to sleep in the jello. <laughs> <laughs> so wrong. So many levels. I think God has intentionally not <laughs> spoken to you. <laughs> wow. Needs a little bit of distance. A little bit of distance. So he chose not to speak to Zach. I was about to say something, but then... You're a bad, bad boy, no, Zach. It's not going to be worth it. Okay, so you're teaching a prayer class. Okay. You knew what you were getting into. I, I you know. know. You knew, I did. <laughs> okay, so... This is the sacred so, and the profane. So here's the here's the thing about prayer class. When when I teach the class, people come and and the reason they come oftentimes is they want to know how to pray. Well, how do I pray right? How do I pray the yeah. best way so that God actually answers? You know, or whatever the case may be, the right words. But it's not about that. Um, and people are usually like, "What?" Um, but the reality is, we were made for relationship, intimate relationship with God, Father, Son, and Spirit, and relationship with one another. And prayer is a vehicle of relationship. That's all it is. It's a conversation. Um, it is as much talking as it is listening. But is that listening, waiting for this um, supernatural, ethereal encounter or experience or audible voice? Not necessarily. Um, it's getting to know Jesus and getting to know who he is. And the more I get to know him, the more familiar he becomes and his voice becomes. And I, each one of us is uniquely made, right? So there's diversity in who we are, um, who you are, how God made you, the gifts he's giving you, um, your heart, your mind, uh, the uniqueness of how you are made. Zach, Jeff, myself, we're all different. So we're all going to hear from God differently. Um, but we, as we practice and cultivate our relationship with him, we will start to discover how he's speaking because he's speaking to all of us. Um, it could be just through, um, you know, ideas or thoughts that you, you don't realize is God actually speaking to you. It's funny. Um, we had a woman who actually, um, kind of received Jesus for the first time in prayer class. She's been coming to church Whoa. for a month, a couple of months and came to prayer class and was like the first night kind of like, uh, and we were going to pray for each other. And she's like, whoa, I, I didn't know I was supposed to pray for somebody else. I just wanted to hear about mm. prayer. This is my first wow. time. It's like, you don't have to pray. We're going to break into groups, but God hears your heart. You don't have to worry about it. We're just practicing. It's about relationship. And I split them off in groups. And I said, you know, find, pick someone in your group that, that is willing to get prayed for. And you guys pray for them. And they got in her group and, and she just began to weep. <laughs> and mm. she didn't know why. And so they prayed for her, and um, the prayers were really sweet, and um, God was encouraging her through those things. And then one of the people in the group just looked at her and said, can I ask you a question? Have you ever received Jesus as Lord of your life? And she's like, I think that's what I'm trying to do. Oh, and she's that's like, so well, sweet. she's like, well, can I pray with you now? You know. Hmm. And she came, you know, she, she's come every week, and um, this is all brand new to her. And this last week, uh, 
the week before was on the Holy Spirit and listening. And she's like, yeah, I don't hear God's voice. I don't think I don't hear. And I've been praying. I've been asking to hear. And I don't hear. I don't hear. I don't hear. Except, you know, today I was, um, uh, I had written down some stuff. And then for some reason, the word listen just popped into my head. And I don't, and it just was, it, and she was even going, it was right here. Mm. <laughs> you know, it was like, listen. And then, and then it was like uh, patience, like be patient. You know, and it's mm. like, yeah, that's that's the Holy Spirit speaking to you. Like, it doesn't have to be this big, grand thing. It's not this thus says the Lord or this suddenly holy voice. It's it's learning that he is with you always and he is moving and he is um, he is speaking through people, through um, thoughts that you have, through um, a, a sense that you have. I think I'm supposed to do this or I think I'm supposed to go here. Um, and you know, we talk about testing, you know, is that the Lord? Is yeah. that not, does it line up with his character? Is it contradict maybe the character of God? Then it's probably not him, but, um, there are ways to kind of go, Lord, is that you? And, you know, confirmation, <laughs> but, um, you probably hear God more than you realize you do. And, um, in prayer class, the invitation is to start paying attention and listening and by listening it doesn't mean like what was that <laughs> you know <laughs> right. but listening in like being aware because he is moving and he is talking and he is with us so yeah. i'm going to do a little advocating for the dark lord for a second here <laughs> and then maybe <laughs> you, darth vader you guys you guys correct me <laughs> I'm your father. um give me that helmet real quick one i f i love everything you just said and by the way let me just say Every time you speak and preach and teach at church, it's like, um, even if I'm not there specifically, because I'm a little bit, I'm off the map on a lot of things um, comparatively to most Christians. So even if I, I disagree with something or, or I'm not where you're at, I I believe you 100% and I love listening to you because it's like, I don't question anything you're saying. And that's not always tr true. I, I A lot of people I listen to, I'm like... That's bullshit. I'm not sure that person believed it. And I'm not talking specifically with our church, so if anyone happens to listen, but just in general, listening to people preach and I listen to a ton of podcasts. Um, and so that I appreciate that you about I appreciate that about you. Um when it comes to saying I feel like God told me, I right now I'm in the spot where it's like, I wish nobody would say that ever. Just yeah. don't. Cause when that goes wrong, yeah. it goes wrong in the worst way. You got the weight of heaven and earth and a eternality, eternal consequences potentially because, Oh, I can't disagree with what God said. And if God said that God told me to buy yeah. that Bitcoin or that, what that pastor right now that that went viral, I don't know his name, but Oh, yeah. He it's... set up a crypto fund that God told him to set up. People lost tons of money and it's worth yeah. nothing now. Um, Christo fund. And listening to that guy, I'm like, I, I kind of believe he felt like God was telling him, which leads to my uh, hypothesis. I, I don't not think, if that makes any sense, that God speaks to us. Like I, I think that happens, but... I don't think it ever happens undistilled. It's always filtered through our experience and our cultural upbringing um, and things we've been brought up to believe. And so sometimes we get close to what God is telling people. And a lot of times we don't. And when it goes wrong, it goes wrong in the worst way. And so what, I don't know that that's a word yeah. salad. What do you think about? No, I that? think that's good. Um, Yes, you. I mean, you want to. I mean, one of the first things we say, what I when I'm teaching is like, we don't say, "Thus says the Lord." Like, you, um, is God speaking? Is He moving? Is He leading? Yes. If you are gonna dare get up and tell somebody else that God is saying this to you, you know, that's that's a whole nother level of um. You better be sure that this is a gift that God's giving you, and you better um test it. So. First Thessalonians 5, I think it's First Thessalonians 5, 16. It says, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks. Then it says, do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophecies, but test everything, right? So there's this, God's giving this invitation to listen to him, to like, 
to be open, but don't just receive everything um, in an instant. There needs to be accountability and testing. There needs to be confirmation. Um, does this line up with this word? Do other people bear witness to it? Like, am I, is there something that I'm like, oh, that doesn't resonate, resonate that there's some, my discern, like we want to cultivate discernment. How do we cultivate yeah. discernment? We do that by spending time with just getting to know Jesus, right? So, so we talk about counterfeit. Discernment has to go with anything in our walk with Jesus and how we listen and how the gifts are being utilized, right? Uh, and discernment, it's like, you know, counterfeit, uh, counterfeit money in the U.S. The task force that are policing that don't study the counterfeits. They don't study all the new counterfeits. They can't keep up. They study the real thing, mm. like so much mm. that when something comes up that is a counterfeit, they see it immediately. Yeah, because they know what the real thing is. They know the voice of God. Now you're right. Like ev- we all view the word. <laughs> Our experience in church, at worship, through all of us, we're uh, South Orange County, upper middle class, you know, white, you know, lens. And part of a lot of the things that have been messy in the church in America in the last, you know, 50 years is because we've had this kind of entitled, weird, white American lens that we've, individualist lens that we've seen everything with and the reality is every one of us are going to stand before jesus one day and be shocked at the things we thought we knew right and shocked at the things we didn't see that was right in front of our faces but if we pull back that and we believe that god is god that there is a god father son and spirit who is love who is motivated by and uh, character and who he is 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 love and that he is in pursuit of us his creation his, the imago day those of us that were made in his image if we believe that uh, he made us for that intimate relationship that relationship was broken and he is uh, jesus came to reconcile that back and to bring that relationship then i think we can believe and trust that he is present he is moving and he is speaking i may not always overtly hear him uh, but i do hear him i think we can run far away you know uh, and we're pendulum swingers so we can we can go you know these fresh moves of god come in and kind of shake up like pharisaical or the religious calcification of mm. of you know churches you know through church history and kind of blows through and brings yeah. this fresh wind fresh fire you know like the yeah. book of acts and it yeah. has to bust through and eventually those waves recede and then Mm. people try to perpetuate it then in their own strength the supernatural they try to keep it going and that's when things get wonky and weird right Mm. and then we see that it's wonky and weird and then we desperately try to shut it down and our reaction is to hightail it again yeah completely the opposite direction and shut it all down Uh, and i think that there's there's an invitation from the lord because there's there's a lot of mystery with him um so I, I think you hear you hear him more than you realize. I think he's present with you more than you realize. Uh, I think we're probably led by him more than you realize. And that's and but it's okay to not and I agree with you. There's a lot of damage that's been done by people thinking they've heard from God and you know, but here's the thing with even spiritual gifts and the Holy Spirit and stuff, is that they're gifts. So um they're not uh there's no qualifications. It's not like you have to reach a certain level of maturity and then ding, 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 you get a gift. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, oh, hey, you passed this level of class. You're this mature and now you get this gift. No, they're gifts. And that means we can use them right and use them wrong. We can abuse them. We can, oh, you know, whatever. An and idea. like yeah. Peter in the garden lopping off an ear with a sword and Jesus like, sorry. You know, um, I, he was given the gift of sword play. <laughs> <laughs> you have to give us something. Yeah. So, uh, you know, yeah, why? I, you know, there's a mess. There is a mess and, in this whole. And maybe that's thing. some of the times that we experience it, like you just 